In this Abacus tutorial, we'll cover how to apply non-uniform loads that vary in time and in space. In this example, we'll apply a periodic pressure load with a spatial Gaussian distribution to the top surface of the part shown on the right. The part is a thin shell and is clamped on the edge nearest to us. In the expression for pressure, the 2D Gaussian or the exponential term is centered on the top surface and xz and z0 define this center point. Sigma x and sigma z govern how quickly the load falls off towards the edges. In the time dependent term, sine omega t, omega is the angular frequency. And the prefactor p0 is the magnitude of the pressure load. This brief movie shows the behavior of the load we will be applying to the top surface. Let's begin by creating an extruded 3D shell with an approximate size of 1. Draw two circles of radius 0.02 .02 with their centers along the y-axis and their x-coordinates at plus or minus 0.06. Then connect the two circles using the connected lines tool. And finally, we'll use the auto trim tool to remove the interior arcs. Set the extrusion depth to 0.25 to finish the part geometry. In the property module, we'll create a material and use the elastic properties of aluminum. And since we're doing a dynamic analysis, we'll also define a density. After setting up the material, we can create a section and we'll use a homogeneous shell and set the thickness to 0.001. Then assign the section to the part. In the assembly module, we'll create an independent instance and then move to the step module. Here we'll create a dynamic implicit step. And under the incrementation tab, we'll use fixed time stepping and then set the increment size to 0 0.02. It's typically more efficient to use automatic time stepping, uh, but in this case, since we're gonna create an animation eventually, uh, we'll use fixed incrementation. Now let's edit the field output requests to output at every increment. If we had used automatic time stepping, we could have requested output at specific intervals in time, and achieves the same result. Now in the load module, we'll start by setting up the clamped boundary condition. Now we can create the non-uniform pressure load. When prompted, select the top surface, and then click on brown even though it looks kind of orange to me. In the edit load box, uh, click on the little F of X for creating an analytical field, and then 
After renaming this to Gaussian 2D, I leave expression field highlighted. And now we have the create expression field box open where we can define our function. On the right hand side, there's a list of operators that can be used. And at the bottom are parameter names that we can use to define the spatial part of our expression. We'll type in only the Gaussian part of the expression and worry about the time dependent sine term in a bit. We'll also neglect the magnitude of the pressure, P0. After entering the expression for the 2D Gaussian centered on the top surface, we can click OK. And then under distribution, we can now select the function that we just created. Now we'll take care of the time dependent sine term by creating an amplitude. And we have a bunch of options here, but periodic makes the most sense for us. This allows us to write the amplitude as a Fourier series. And in our simple example, we can leave all values equal to zero except for the circular frequency or omega and B1, which we'll set to one. Now we can select the amplitude we just created in the drop-down box. And for the magnitude, we can define the value of P0 and here we'll just set it to a thousand. After clicking OK, the pressure load appears centered on the top surface and falls off towards the edges as expected. Next, we'll create a mesh and then submit the job. Before viewing the results, there's one more thing I forgot to mention earlier. We'll switch back to the load module, and then under plugins, tools, there's the amplitude plotter, which we can use to verify that our input for the amplitude was correct. So here we have our sine wave, just verifying that our expression was entered into Abacus correctly. When we view the deform shape and then step through time by clicking on the next frame button, it doesn't appear that the plot is actually changing that much. And this is because the deformation scale factor is automatically being recalculated each time. By clicking on common plot options, we can fix the scale to better understand the transient behavior as we step through the frames. So the shell actually looks like it's deforming, which is a good thing in this case. Finally, you can click on the animate time history icon to view the deformation over time as an animation. And this doesn't work very well on the computer I'm currently using, but you should end up seeing something like this.
And that's all for this video on applying non-uniform loading. Thank you for watching.